name of God, the creator, redeemer, sustainer of our lives. Amen. It is a big day here at St. Stephen's. Today is Rally Sunday, when we bring back our full slate of services and kick off our fall season of programs. You can feel the excitement in the air around the campus, and the lectionary has offered up the perfect gospel for this day, because nothing says Rally Sunday like sin and church conflict. Am I right? <laughs> Seriously, this, this gospel is a tough draw for a preacher today. But let's look more closely. It's actually not so much about sin, but about conflict, about how we navigate and mediate conflict in community, how we seek reconciliation after a wrong has been done. And when you think about it, it's pretty solid advice, this passage. Let's say if someone has done something to hurt you or to harm the community, Jesus says, first go and talk to that person alone, one-on-one. -on -one. See if you can work it out there. And if that doesn't work, then take someone with you, kind of mediate the conversation. And still, if you're not making progress, then get a broader group involved. That's really a pretty solid model for working through conflict. It's also a reminder that all that we do here is grounded in relationship. When two or three are gathered together, Jesus says, he will be in the midst of us. There is something sacred about living in community, even when it's hard. One of the most beautiful things about church is that it's that rare place in society where we gather across those normal lines of difference and disagreement. We come here from all corners of Richmond, from different stages and walks of life. We come with different political perspectives and, and religious backgrounds. And we come here and the remarkable thing is that we gather together and form relationships of healing and hope and trust. And that's a big part of what we do here every day and what we celebrate on this day. We rally around the altar and around the baptismal font. We come together in small groups and in Sunday school and outreach ministries and around the supper table. We gather for conversations that matter. We gather to sing and to pray, and we go out into the world to carry that message of hope to others in need. Paul says it best in the reading we heard a minute ago from Romans. All the commandments are summed up in this, he says. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's what we call the great commandment. To love God, to love our neighbors, to love ourselves. On this hangs all the law and the prophets. That's what we rally around this day. A Muslim friend of mine once told me that in his tradition, we were talking about this passage of what it means to love our neighbors. And he said in his tradition, the teaching is that the command to love your neighbor extends for 40 houses. And I said, why, why 40? And he says, well, in, in a lot of Bible passages, 40 is a symbolic number. It's meant to be never-ending. Think of the Israelites wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. It was meant to seem like forever. And he said, with the houses, you're supposed to lose count on the way to 40. So then you just keep going. 
And you never stop until all the world is your neighbor. I love that image. And that's what we rally around this day. The timeless invitation to love God, to love our neighbors, and to love ourselves fully. Everything we do and say in this place points us to that invitation. And on that note, I want to close by asking you to indulge me for a minute. Often on this Rally Sunday, churches take a moment to commission their volunteers, you know, the Sunday school teachers, worship leaders, and so forth. So we're going to do a version of that. If you are a small group leader or a Sunday school teacher, if you go to Sunday Forum or, or Many Parents, One Vine, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, if you share in any of our formation ministries here, I want you to stand for a moment and remain standing. I'm going to look at you until you do. <laughs> now, if, if you participate in any of our outreach ministries or our pastoral care ministries, if you help with a food pantry or tutor children, if you volunteer at the farmer's market or at Peter Paul, if you prepare meals or knit prayer shawls or make home visits, I want you to stand and stay standing. If you serve on any of our standing committees, if you serve in the vestry, if you're a member of the Women of St. Stephen's, any of our other fellowship groups, I want you to stand. If you bring our worship to life, if you sing in the choir, serve on the altar guild or flower guild or needlepoint guild, if you're an usher, a greeter, an acolyte, if you bring yourself and your spirit to worship in this place, I want you to stand. Now, if you're not already standing, and if you're able to stand, you should stand up too. <laughs> everybody should be standing because everybody is commissioned for ministry by virtue of our baptism. Every one of us is called into community to seek healing and hope, reconciliation, to proclaim God's love to our neighbors for 40 houses and 40 more until we lose count. Now let us pray. Almighty God, giver of grace and lover of concord, commission these your servants for the work of ministry. Imbue us with inquiring minds and discerning hearts. Help us to seek dialogue in times of division. Help us grow in faith and service. Grant us a full measure of your love, that we may love you and love each other and love ourselves in your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now remain standing, and in a moment together we will reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed.